of speculation, don't you? I think so. I, th I, I think so. <laughs> yes. I have a sneaking suspicion that we're going to see a lot more Dishonored 2 tonight. I, I, yeah, I have one of those sneaking suspicions as well. I don't yes. know where it's coming from. <laughs> All right, guys, the showcase is about to start, but we will be back in an hour with exclusive interviews. Fuck you. Please weekend. never so come back. Stay tuned to the live stream and follow along on Twitter, Apathesda, with the hashtag BE3. And send us your questions 17, 16, 15. Go away. Both of you. Wow, 17 minutes late. So I thought EA was running late with actually being like about two or three minutes over. Three, two, goodbye. Fuck. Right, now we can get on the conference. So what have we got? Bethesda, wow us. CDB3? Oh. Oh, you cheeky bitches. Uh. Oh, you fucks. Oh, holy shit. I did not know about this. I knew it was rumored, but I did not know. Quake's back, baby. Okay, so right after you're having a, delivering an awesome single player campaign in Doom, they're going to deliver us an arena, an actual, like an, a more arena base, arena heavy Quake game. This is smart. And it appears to be sort of class based. Interesting. Class based or at least technique based that's going to be individual to characters. Cool. Quick, baby. Quick, champions. Makes sense. So maybe mobile? Ladies and gentlemen. That's interesting. <clears throat> Bring it on, quick. Yeah. That's, that's actually pretty badass. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I knew there was some quick announcement probably coming, but I didn't know it was going to be this. Good evening, and welcome to the Bethesda E3 Showcase. Yeah! Yes, Quake is back. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> Fucking right, man. The game that defined competitive multiplayer is back and better than ever. <laughs> yes, you know, it is. It's hard to believe that 20 years ago, Quake was first released, and... 20? Oh, man, that's true. 20 years since the original Quake. That's a, that's been a long time coming, baby. Set new standards for multiplayer and push the boundaries for graphics and gameplay. It did at the Quake time. Became a pioneer for esports, and 20 years later, Quake is still played in tournaments across the globe. Yes, it is, Ruben McGarry. I'm one. I'm looking at you, man. Annual gathering, QuakeCon. Uh, Terabytes Gaming. By the way, I'm giving them a wee shout out. Uh, at Terabytes Gaming, if you want to give them a wee look see, run their own uh, Quake Clan and servers. Original game. I'd love those guys. Uh, I barely get to play with them, but you should go and check out their team team deathmatch videos and stuff. They actually have a few up online. Quick champions. Come on, tell us, tell us more. Tell me more. Give me more. Champions is a competitive arena style first person shooter for the PC. Designed for players. Arena first person shooter PC. Whether you are new to Quake or have been fragging for the last 20 years, Quake <laughs> Champions will give you the challenge and rush you'd expect from id software multiplayer games. Now, we know that high-end performance is critical with this type of game. You know, so be assured, as with any id software game, that Quake Champions will be fast with amazing graphics running at 120 hertz with unlocked frame rate. Right. You're going to get heart-stopping action 
that will keep you on the edge of your seat as you fight in classic arena combat. Quake Champions also taps into another hallmark of the franchise, unique and badass characters. The game features a diverse cast of warriors, each with different attributes and unique abilities, allowing you to fight the way that you want. And you know that it has a long tradition of supporting competitive tournaments, and that continues with Quake Champions. The game is designed for world-class esports play at every level, from the world's greatest Quake players to anyone willing to test their skills right. in the arena. So as part of the launch plan for Quake Champions, Bethesda will be supporting and expanding competitive tournaments and leagues beyond QuakeCon. And we'll have more to share about that in the coming months. Yeah, so essentially they're actually bringing more of an esports angle to it to keep the uh, perspective going. Join us at QuakeCon in August. Yeah. And we'll have even more to talk about. And now, please join me in welcoming Bethesda's global breast Vice President of PR and Marketing, Pete Hines. Hi, PR dude! What do you got to tell us that the actual developers don't? Marketing! Fuck yeah! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, as Tim said, we'll have even more to show on Quake Champions uh, this August at QuakeCon. And it's right there in the name. How would we not have our new Quake game at, at QuakeCon? Make any sense? But we're, right now, we're not at QuakeCon. We're at E3, the best yes. week in gaming. And this is the Bethesda E3 Showcase. Oh. OK. Showcase is some shit, motherfucker. So welcome to everyone here with me and to the millions of you watching online around the world. Thank you Hi. for we planned this showcase just like we make all of our games for you. Now, last year, our showcase kicked off a big year for Bethesda, one of the yep. biggest in our many years of making games. So let me mention just a few highlights. The Elder Scrolls Online was released on console and became one of the best-selling games of 2015 and the MMO of the year. We launched Fallout Shelter, the very first mobile game. They were actually the cheering for Fallout Shelter, not for Elder Scrolls Online. Instant hit and winner of multiple Mobile Game of the Year awards. <laughs> to be honest, yeah, Bethesda kind of like November, sweeped. Fallout 4 was one of the biggest launches in the industry. Sweeped a few different like console, mobile, PC. So you've heard of it. Good. <laughs> they won numerous Game of the Year awards, including at DICE and again at the BAFTA Awards. And now Fallout 4 is bringing user mods to Xbox One and soon to PS4 in a way that's never been seen before. And just that's last true. month, the new Doom was released to rave reviews. <laughs> well, the initial concerns, really, but then ridiculously yeah, rave reviews. Which I, I told people, I warned them. I warned you it was going to be good. And, shooter games, and now you have a new Doom game faithful to its legacy with some of the best graphics and gameplay ever, and millions of fans have been enjoying the fast-paced action and creating and sharing mods using SnapMap. The response to all of these games has been amazing, and your enthusiasm and support for us has encouraged us to go even bigger. We just heard about our new Quake game. Let's see what else we have planned for you guys. Yes. At last year's showcase. Come on. I told you about The Elder Scrolls Legends, a free-to-play collectible card game. Now, as I said last year, I am a huge fan of, uh, of these games. I play them a lot. So this is a game I'm particularly excited about. Legends provides a very deep strategy experience. Yeah, we already knew about that. Multiplayer modes, beginning with a campaign complete with a compelling story, interesting characters, and some great gameplay. The story is told from the perspective of a moth priest named Kellen. I'll let him tell you a little more as we take a look at the campaign's opening cinematic. Sorry, folks, I'm actually tweeting at the same time here because of the whole B3 thing. Um, <laughs> I love actually Jim Sterling's comment, Elder Scrolls Online was named MMO of the Year by us just now, so suck it! your stories, old man, unless they can sharpen spears. Our war chief is dying. Our enemies are massing for another attack. We must prepare for battle. We should go, Kellen. Oh my we god, Frash! It's you! And this one smells blood in the wind. Patience, Nog. 
I have words yet to speak here. Stories can do surprising things. Monk Fresh Fresh. Whether they are true or not. And what just happened? Uh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Did... I don't think my connection took a shitter there. I think just the actual stream took a shit. This is the story of a forgotten hero who changed the very course of history. Did they just restart? No. I was wondering there. It just went blank for a while and then this. Maybe that's the reason why they took 70 minutes to start their stream. Because shit was hitting fans? Possibly? When Legends begins, you're set on a path to discover the world of the Elder Scrolls in a way you haven't seen before. The choices you make define your approach and unlock all the depth the game has to offer. A two-lane battlefield provides more variety and strategic depth. Players make decisions that change the cards they want to improve or... Front lane, back lane. And we offer a full single-player campaign, as well as multiple ways to play against the AI. It's or card games. It's battle and arena modes. It's a TCD. Now we began Gee. public beta testing in April, and so far the feedback from the people who have been playing has been terrific. To Grip. celebrate E3 this week, we'll be letting even more of you into the beta to start playing. Now, if you haven't signed up yet, just visit Bethesda.net, create an account, and sign up, and be sure to keep an eye on your email. Also tonight, we're very pleased to announce that in addition to PC and iPad, Legends will be coming to iPhone, Mac, and Android tablets and phones later this year. Obviously. Why wouldn't you? As I mean, I said, if you weren't, it would be stupid. It brings together an award-winning franchise that I love and a new genre, and whether you're a veteran strategy card fan or have never played a game before, it's a game we think you'll all really enjoy. And now, so long as we're on the topic of Legends, let's take a look at what the team at Bethesda Game Studio has been hard at work on. Welcome here to Bethesda Game Studios. It's amazing to think it has only been a year since you first heard about Fallout 4 at this very event. And thanks to you, it became not just our most popular game ever, but one of the industries. It has simply blown us away, and we're incredibly blessed to have fans like you. Seeing what you've created, not just in the main game with the add-ons and of course mods, it is just incredible. Oof. We're not done yet. We're excited to show you what's coming next for Fallout 4. Yep, please do. Um, outside of telling us more about Bahaba. Contraptions. Right. Oh, oh Rune Goldberg machines everywhere. Oh no. <laughs> yep. Next week. Okay, that's kind of cool. Pull out contraptions. And then Vault Tech, which means you can build your own vaults. That means uh, floor building damage, like location changing and building whole areas in the caves. This is cool. It means more exploration of the underground, building a full vault for you to move around in. Oh shit! Vault Tech actually allows you to do in game Fallout Shelter? Alright, I'm on board with that. That's fucking crazy, man. Oh, cool! <laughs> to do to vacation to Nuka World. So is that August? Okay. That's the August release. Cool. All right. We also announced and released Fallout Shelter, which over 50 million of you. Have downloaded and played. That's actually you pretty awesome. Um, as a, as a series of DLC packs, I can approve of those. Right. 
Right, go on quest with your guys rather than just send them out. And come into PC. So they've elaborized it to the point where, yeah, quest and PC version. Yeah, so they've elaborated it to the point where it's actually can be expanded to other consoles, so it's a management sim on its own. Thank you again, not just for your support over the last year. I'm waiting for the point where they actually have Fallout Shelter and you can export your shelter into the game. There is something else, though, that you've been asking us about, and yes, we've been working on it. So, of course, the Skyrim uh, remaster, which we've all been aware of. Goodbye, girlfriend, press. See you later, Hyrule. I'll be gone. I'll be on. I'm no longer your fool. Of the game of a crap. Fill the gap till I waited to begin the adventure of my life in the land of Skyrim. So, PC mods on Skyrim, on consoles, cool. And uh, of course, uh, a remaster remake. So, I'm, I'm a bit torn about the idea of remasters on a, I'm, I'm, I'm torn by the idea of remasters on games that are less than five years old. Skyrim hasn't been out that long to even though games that are actually less that age old and been run on PC have the ability to run these modern consoles because their consoles were only finally catching up. It's it's an odd pattern really when you think about it. Hi everyone, I'm very excited to be here tonight on behalf of Arcane Studios, the makers of Dishonored. <laughs> Our passion is for the a specific kind of game, first-person immersive games. Our games blend narration and simulation in a way that makes every player's experience different. Where players can improvise and where choices have consequence. Our games encourage replay in order to try different play styles so that players are free to play their own way. In 2012, we released Dishonored. We were thrilled that the game was so well received by the gamers. And the so slow. Uh, that was like one of the this best. This all games feels games. so slow. After that launch, my friend and co-directive director Harvey Smith. I'm not too sure I can make it. So he went to France in Lyon and. Uh, if I die, meanwhile, my corpse will do the live stream tomorrow. Something else with the team in Austin. And tonight, I have a surprise for you. I'm going to reveal what are you revealing prizes in a minute uh, it's a new game built on the values that are so dear to arcane it's another first person right game set in a dangerous universe only this time we've added a psychological thrill psychological thriller Here right the world's first look at what we've been up to good morning Morgan today is Monday March 15th 2032 you have a 9 a.m. appointment with Alex in his office. There is no duration set for this meeting. Okay. It's a 3 p.m. meeting in Transtar Conference Room A to greenlight research. It looks pretty as fuck, so this has to be a rendered sequence, but. Introducing on direction. The most recent test results from the What is this? Good morning, Morgan. Today is Monday, March 15th, 2032. You have a 9 a.m. appointment with Alex in his office. Right. Good morning, Morgan. Today is Monday, March 15th, 2032. Good morning, Morgan. Looks like we have some tests to run through today. This is interesting. So, some kind of infection? Th 
this is new IP, so I am intrigued as hell. Good morning, Morgan. Morning, Morgan. You're not going to like what I have to say next. I... Oh. I'm so puzzled. Oh! Fuck! Right! Okay. Pray! Uh, about time! Okay. It's a bit of a redesign from what we were previously shown. So this is a new Prey one. You awaken aboard Talos One, a very special space station. It is year 2032. You are the key subject of an experiment meant to alter humanity forever. But things yeah. have gone wrong, of course. The space station has been overrun by an alien threat, and you are now being hunted. As you dig into the dark secrets of Talos One and your own past, you must survive using all the tools at your disposal on board of the station. So it's kind of a bit of a dead space abilities. slash the original Prey. They've completely abandoned that. I like the previous video they did, the previous version of Prey, the Bounty Hunter. That looked pretty cool. The idea that you're actually a human being who gets yanked into the modern world and then has to actually survive by becoming a bit of a fucking prick. That was the uh, the feeling of the second game. Uh, the, well, the, the teaser of the second game that it was going to be. But now we've got another survival psychological horror. So, suppose, I mean, I, I personally find it to be a loss because I was really intrigued by the idea of just being a bounty hunter. But, I mean, that involves having generated quests and locations and... Uh, you never really be that bounty hunter without a risk, uh, irresponsible, without a sense of responsibility while being irresponsible. But I like the idea of it actually being a previous cop that was on a plane. So I don't know. That's that, that, that's an interesting way of doing the prey game now again because psychological horror is probably a much bigger trend than it was whenever the last games came out. So it might fit better for this modern audience. So this is. Yeah, the snap map for Doom. I like the fact that it's actually a fairly elaborate system for picking spawns and everything else. And anything you can find in the campaign, yeah. Yeah. Next month we'll release two new modes, including a uniquely Doom variant of one flag CTF called Exodus. Nice! new multi-zone capture and hold mode called Sector. Later this summer, we'll turn up the heat with the release of three free-for-all modes, including classic deathmatch. Right. Will be free to all players and play so Doom's really kind of like, they're upping their game on the multiplayer because people were concerned about the uh, game types. Um, I've, I honestly haven't heard that much about Doom's multiplayer. The first DLC pack includes three new multiplayer maps. Yeah. Offering, Cataclysm, and Ritual. A new playable demon called the Harvester Whoa. A new gun, equipment item, armor sets, taunts, and more. It's kind of cool because the demon system kind of works like the evolve method of having a monster on the team. And we can't wait to give you even more ways to compete, create, play, and fight like hell. Thank you. They really are kicking it with the, the Doom uh, gameplay. It really, really is cool. That's a nice touch. Wow, ton of great stuff there for everyone that's enjoying Doom. And again, we thank you, the fans, for making it such a hit. Doom has received near universal acclaim from critics and players. Yeah, and uh, once it was released. Combat, over the top demons and amazing graphics, everything that it is known for. Mm -hmm. now, it is also known as a longtime supporter of shareware, or for you youngsters in the audience, that's what us old guys used to call a demo. Okay. And and in a nod to that tradition, we decided to offer anyone that hasn't checked out Doom's amazing gameplay a chance to do it for free. Right. So, starting tonight, you can download and play the first level of Doom on Steam, PS4, or Xbox One for free. Nice. Now, this offer is only good this week. Yeah. We want everyone to have a chance to see why Doom is one of the highest rated shooters ever. So if you love super intense action or you just want to experience state-of-the-art gaming, you badass motherfuckers and fight like hell on us.
we think you'll see what everyone else is talking about. Yeah, yeah. fair play. We'll shift from Demons of Hell to Daedric Princes and Secret Assassin Cults. Please welcome from Zenimax Online Studios, the Elder Scrolls Online. That was a very, very cool touch. That was like, because Doom and Quake were huge sharewares uh, games. Like, I mean, most people cracked the shareware of Quake to play more of the game. Like, I think it was the first world and last world were actually on it. This week is the one year anniversary of the launch of the Elder Scrolls Online on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. That's pretty because cool. We were launching the game uh, this time last year. I was a little busy and I wasn't able to be here in person. But mm, I can imagine you would have been mid. But yeah, the, holy shit. The, I'm going to be downloading Doom as soon as we're actually off of the air of this and getting that motherfucker on to play for our first 15 minutes episode. Oh. Because I've, I've seen the first level of Doom a few times now because of plenty of people I watch stream it. Your enthusiasm and your feedback. We take it really seriously and we continue to work to improve the game. And based on the response, you like the changes. Yeah. Mentally, I haven't played Elder Scroll Online for months now. So. MMOG, and the best MMOG of 2015 was one of the best selling games of the year of any kind and now supports a highly engaged community of over 7 million of you. Who yeah, man, that's. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the Elder Scrolls Online. And the reason why you say you're an engaged because you have a buy and let go kind of Guild Wars-esque play method. I, you don't have to actually be paying a subscription to pick it up and play it again. So I would say your ownership... 34 billion monsters slain. Your ownership levels are actually higher than your actual current player levels. 13 billion quests. I'm on the bet I probably completed about a dozen of those, maybe? You know, I mean, only a dozen. Ha! What? Kill the mud crabs! I did actually appear in one of those events, which was kind of cool, with the anchor appearing and then taking it down, because I didn't play it that much. I really need to get more into that game. I enjoyed Elder Scrolls Online, it's just, like, the same with any MMO, really you need to get into it with a team of people, and anybody I knew was already well, well ahead of myself by the time I got into the game. Creepy frozen ice giant. Seven million and growing. I'm sorry, maybe I'll have to go back to Final Fantasy 14 before I go back to Elder Scrolls, really. But, cool game. It actually, it is good. Um, just, uh, it, it survived its issues that it's beta express and the early days of the PC version. The console game is pretty good, actually. It's solid. Tonight. I'm very happy to announce that on June 23rd, we'll be expanding internationally by launching Elder Scrolls Online in Japan. All right, cool. I look forward to welcoming these fellow adventurers to the exciting world of Tamriel. And for everyone who plays, we have a lot more great content on the way. Mm -hmm. For me, one of my favorite moments in any RPG ever was a Dark Brotherhood quest in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. It was, it was packed full of assassination and intrigue, and yeah. me, fans everywhere loved so it. Be Thieves and Assassins. For the of the Dark DLC game pack. Thieves and Assassins, oh my! Dangerous, murderous the bastards, all of them. The to another location from Oblivion, the Gold Coast of Cyrodiil. The Dark Brotherhood has a appropriately dark storyline full of intrigue and mystery and brings all new repeatable quest gameplay to ESO. So, please enjoy the worldwide debut of the Dark Brotherhood DLC launch trailer. Oh, okay. This is a uh, purchasable DLC. Um, mother, the mother, is unplayable unless you pay for the expansion, of course. Well, the sins of the unworthy must be baptized in blood. And in blood. This is the Black Sacrament Initiate, a contract that calls for murder. Now go, assassin. Take your blade into the night. Be rewarded for your service. Do you have to go be an assassin? I mean, what if you didn't want to play as an assassin style character? Oh! 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 Welcome, <laughs> Initiate, to the Dark Brotherhood. And know this 
In Tamriel, no one is safe. Safe from what? Especially from us. Sweet mother, sweet mother, send your child unto me. Well, they're a bunch of violent psychopaths. Our PC players are already having fun sneaking around Tamriel and learning more about the, this mysterious group. All right, PC Tamriel players, so... ...what happens when our console players uh, get to experience a Dark Brotherhood this week. But that's not all. Oh, the expansion comes out this our week as well? ...in the Elder Scrolls Online is... Oh, stuff for them to be announcing for this week? Since launch, we've regularly been adding innovative features such as the Justice System and the Champion System. And we're about to make another game changer. Tonight, we're announcing one Tamriel, marking another major evolution of gameplay in the Elder Scrolls Online. With one Tamriel, all characters will be automatically leveled to content in the world, allowing them to freely group with anyone they want, and also to explore the vast world of Tamriel with no level restrictions. Right. This means... Yeah! This means all content barriers are gone and there are no restrictions on alliances or questing. From the moment you get out of the tutorial, the entire game world is open for you to explore freely. You can go wherever you want and play with whomever you want. This is the first time this has ever been done in a multi-platform RPG. We'll think you'll love it. One. Yeah, man. That's pretty fucking badass. One Tamriel will be coming to the Elder Scrolls Online this fall. In closing, I want to thank the awesome... Yeah, that would actually bring me back to playing, especially if there's like, people I know. I mean, Dale, you're probably watching the stream. I'd, I'd jump back into Elder Scrolls if you and me were actually able to set up the same level and do quests together. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, man. That guy obviously really loves his job as well, so, um, yeah. Goddamn. Thank you, Matt. Well done. Yeah, definitely. Now, we want you to get as much as possible uh, out of this year's showcase. So, this year, after we're done here in the hangar, we're just going to keep the showcase going. Now, for those of you watching at home, our pre-show hosts, Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb, will be back to take over the stream, and they'll bring you exclusive interviews and more information about all the games that we're talking about here tonight. No here thanks. in Los Angeles, we've built an interactive space over on the other side of the lot where you have a chance to learn more about our games, play some of them, and meet some of our developers. Over there, there is also food, drink, and to make sure it's a real party, we have arranged a special performance by Blink-182, who will drop their new album, who will drop their new album, California, in a couple of weeks, and you get to hear them live tonight as they start their summer tour. All right, Blink-182. We have a treat for you over there as well, a chance to experience the latest in virtual reality from Bethesda. Ooh. Now, this intrigues me. Weren't expecting that, were you? No. Now, the first time anyone uh, experienced modern VR uh, was at E3 2012. And if you were there and lucky enough, you may yeah. remember getting to play Doom 3 BFG in our booth. Now, at the time, we had solved some of the toughest technology challenges posed by VR, and people were amazed. Since then, we've quietly continued our pioneering work in VR, and tonight, we want you to see and experience what you feel when you put on a headset and play the latest uh, AAA games in the industry. Now we have two games for you to experience. The first is the just released Doom. You can take a virtual tour Doom VR. and get a totally unique look at the very latest in graphics and true next-gen rendering from our id Tech 6 engine. In addition, we think the greatest promise of VR is its ability to immerse players completely into virtual worlds, and that the best games for that experience will be first-person open-world RPGs. Yeah. So we have Fallout 4 for you to play as well. Fallout 4 VR. It's a nice touch. Wander the Wasteland. Check That's pretty the fucking cool. Red Rocket, Tri Combat. I'm telling you, with a Pip-Boy on your arm, a dog by your side, a gun in your hand, it's pretty incredible. Tonight, we're pleased to announce that Fallout 4 will be released in 2017 on the HTC Vive platform. Nice. That's pretty fucking cool. You thought survival mode was an intense way to experience Fallout. You yeah. You haven't seen nothing yet. We want to give you a glimpse into where we're headed with VR, where you can expect us to remain a leader, offering our games on the very best platforms you choose. So be sure to check it out. 
Now, for more on the, the biggest problem is talking about VR. You can't demonstrate it on a fucking stage. What's happening and get an update on what they have planned. Adam, Morgan, what do you have for us? Thanks, Pete. Now, we are here at BE3+, Plus, and this is sort of this experience that you guys are going to get to see um, after the showcase. We have some Bethesda VR over here. Now, right now, there's no line, so that's kind of tempting, I'm isn't so it? I'm so taking advantage of that. And over here, Elder Scrolls Legends, for everyone to play. Pete, I fully expect to see you at one of these tables showing off that... Big giant, oh, flat. Like that, those are flat scan you know, LCD actually, panels with the actual gameplay on. That would actually be really fun with a touch play and, like, tap, tap, tap. Oh. Oh god. Oh, playing Hearthstone on a giant flat screen TV sitting on my lap. Now that, that would be actually a song that would get me into playing it. I don't know. Playing on a tablet, playing on your phone, it's fun. But that was fucking. Uh, I want to play a tabletop RPG like that. I want to be able to draw my guys and have them move. Uh, uh, custom tables. I, the thing is, in my head, I know I could build those from scratch. It's just a matter of does anybody want to buy one for four grand? We shared a few tidbits about the sequel, but for the most part, you could say we've been in stealth mode. Until now. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Dishonored 2 is going to be a very special game, one that lives up to its celebrated legacy and then goes way beyond. It does it now. Please join me in welcoming the creative director of Dishonored 2, Harvey Smith. Well, tell us more, Harvey. So we've got two protagonists. Wow. Thanks, Pete. Hi, everybody. In Dishonored, you play a supernatural assassin in a steampunk city. The game blends combat, stealth, and mobility, giving you many different pathways and approaches. When the original Dishonored was released in 2012, you embraced the game and made it your own. You discovered moves and combinations of powers that we didn't even imagine. We were thrilled by your passion for Dishonored. Emerging gameplay. We were humbled by the success of the game, which won more than 100 Game of the Year awards. At last year's E3, we announced Dishonored 2. So tonight, here with all of you for the first time, we're going to show you the game. Oh, actual gameplay, sweet. This is cool. You smoking your pipe, boy? Such a bizarre way of building a typewriter. Though I do like that globe keyboard. Welcome back to the Empire of the Isles, a rich Victorian inspired fantasy world with a distinct style and an exotic cast. Kanaka. For Dishonored 2, we wanted to explore a new location, Karnaka, the jewel of the south. Our approach to world creation is very layered. Our art and design teams work together to create a strong sense of place with a well-realized culture. It's based on the people living there, the work they do, the architecture, economy, the climate, even the food and songs. Well-rounded and built. Well, the previous game was essentially just uh, fucked up London, wasn't it? The city looks gorgeous. Um, to life, we've created a custom game engine designed to support mm -hmm. our signature art direction and level design. We wanted Dishonored 2 to resemble a painting in motion, so we've given considerable thought to our lighting and the way it plays across every surface. We've created custom tools to support the interruptible real-time narrative scenes necessary for a stealth simulation. And the same is true for our approach to audio, both in terms of atmospherics and stealth gameplay. All of these details make Karnaka more vivid thanks to our new technology, which we call the Void Engine. Void Engine, they call it. Well, I'd like to see movement in this environment. It looks really cool. I mean, all of these are really nice, beautiful set, kind of like pans and angles, but we're not going to see it from these angles. I mean, all of this wonderful detail is not going to be seen a lot of the time because of the way we're running through it, but and it looks really impressive in the first place. To explore, we've got several creative goals. We want the environment to feel coherent and complete, plausible. Where do these characters live and how do they get to work? Is there a, a viable pathway that makes sense? Where do they take their breaks or stop for lunch? Yeah. But it goes further than that. For Dishonored 2, we In a very assassin-based game, you kind of need to find them. ...history of a given street or shop. 
What was there a decade before the player arrives in Karnaka? Yeah. Often you can see the layers of history, watermarks on the wall from past floods, peeling posters and The history and arguments of the world. We want every market, every alley to tell a story and offer you the chance to see something novel or intriguing. Dishonored 2 starts and ends in Dunwall, but most of the action takes place here in Karnaka. The action starts in Karnaka? All right, there you go. Your first look is an interesting Star touch. Thank you. On behalf no, thank of you. My teammates at Arcane in Lyon who worked so hard to bring this to you, and my dear friend Rafael Colantonio, thank you so much for all the passion you've given the game. In the first Dishonored game, you played Corvo Atano, falsely accused of killing the Empress, the woman he loved and was sworn to protect, and you were blamed for the abduction of their daughter, Emily Caldwin. After escaping on the night of his execution, Corvo is gifted with supernatural powers and dedicates himself to avenging the death of the Empress and restoring young Emily to the throne. As we began to work on Dishonored 2, a single question haunted us. What became of Emily Caldwin? How would her experiences affect her and what kind of ruler would she become? We envisioned Emily grown up, 25 years of age, and then we began to imagine what she'd be like as a heroic figure, as someone fighting for her life against the forces of deceit. We developed a vision for Emily Caldwin that excited us, and at E3 last year, we shared that vision with the world. With that random trailer. Dishonored 2 is set 15 years after the first game. Emily Caldwin rules the empire watched over by her father, Corvo Atano. Oh, fantastic. This is what I wanted to see. This is actual, like, action and gameplay. Loyal subjects, we're going through a difficult time, but today we honor my mother, the late Jessamine Caldwin. May her memory survive through the ages. Emily. You look tired, Father. Every year, I think the anniversary of Jessamine's death will be easier, but it never is. I wish your mother was still the Empress. I don't think I'm very good at this. You're still learning. Don't worry about the rabble rousers, and we'll catch the crown killer eventually. People are saying it's you, but these assassinations are a misguided effort to <laughs> No. Flipping incense? All right. For your mothers. Sometimes you do. You think I don't know about your nights out on the rooftops? Courage. The ceremony will be over soon. Royal protector and father. I should have passed a law against that combination of titles years ago. Huh. <laughs> We're sitting at your throne, queen. When an otherworldly usurper seizes the throne, the fate of the Empire is left hanging in the balance. Dishonored 2 offers you the choice of playing as Empress Emily Caldwin or the royal protector, Corvo Atano. Emily and Corvo are both fully voiced this time with their own perspectives and emotional responses to the events transpiring around them. Okay. Whether you choose to play, whoever you choose to play, you've got to flee Donwall, your home, and travel to Karnaka in order to unravel the threads of a conspiracy and take back what's yours. I've got to get away. I should talk to the captain of that ship. Right. Going for a swim? Dishonored is known for unscripted, simulation-driven missions. That was very have the same experience. uninteresting gameplay that they showed for that. To explore as you penetrate well -defended locations. But very beautiful, so uh, ways to find uneventful. Nefarious targets. In crafting the missions for Dishonored 2, we've put a much greater emphasis on big, interesting themes, either from a gameplay or fictional standpoint, making each mission a wildly unique place to explore. I'll explain a little bit more about that. Today we're going to show you the Dust District, an industrial ruin ravaged by terrible storms that hit at random intervals. Okay. In the Dust District, a militant religious faction called the Overseers is at war with the Howler Gang, 
The leaders of both factions are trying to take each other down. You can side with the overseers or the howlers or neither. There are many ways to complete the mission. So yeah, the lighting and the city and the design this is absolutely gorgeous. I'm worried that this is actually one of those games that looks Everything as good as it does now. It might take a little of a drop for the lighting system to look as cool, but the original Dishonored game tended to actually cover for that pretty well. Although feeling a little bit flat in the earlier scenes. Jesus! Yeah. Does look big and pretty. Target, Vice Overseer Burn. We've got to get past a Grand Guard checkpoint sealed off by a wall of light. A cruel security device reinstated by the Duke of Circonos. Orders from the Duke. We're losing too many people. Good soldiers blinded by that hallucinogenic powder the howlers use, then stabbed to death or dragged down by the Abbey's hounds. One young lieutenant. Yeah, tracking the kill back to its power supply. Fair enough, that's where it is. You find platforms to teleport yourself to? We've made much greater use of vertical space for Dishonored 2, encouraging players to explore the rooftops above the streets. Ah, uh, storm coming in makes <laughs> makes him not be able to see or hear you. Very cool. Nice takedown. That's actually pretty cool. The storm alters visibility for the AI and for the player. A random storm hits and Emily comments on it. Many of the security devices in Dishonored 2 are powered by wind, a unique feature of Karnaka. So here we're switching off the windmill to get through the wall of light. There'll be a lot going on in this next fight. Drop attack, guards climbing and vaulting, combat choke, and Emily using far reach to pull an explosive whale oil tank toward her from a distance. You are going in. Whoa, there he goes over the wall. Jesus. Nice. Okay. I throw him over a wall. Nope, missed. Ah, oh, shot him in the ass. Ooh. Right, let's jump forward closer to our. Damn, right up Main Street. The overseers are fighting the Howler gang for the hearts and minds of the people of Karnaka. What happens here will influence Karnaka's future and the end games. Here we're, we're going to use Emily's mesmerized power to lull a group of overseers into a stupor, evading combat altogether. Mesmerized, they won't notice Emily or even no remember that she was here. There you are. I feel so empty right now. Nice move. Pretty useful. Objects from a distance, but also enemies, so you can finish them off in midair. Okay, quick and easy way to kill. All of Emily's powers, which are new, and all of Corvo's can be fully upgraded using entirely new skill trees, giving you the ability to customize more deeply. Hmm. If you're new to the Dishonored series, it's all about options and exploration, playing at your own pace. The game has many different pathways through each mission, and also different approaches, stealth or combat, lethal or non-lethal, and a wide, range of, a wide array of supernatural powers that will dramatically change the experience as you play. 
We're very close to Vice Overseer Burns' office now. See, the sneaky, sneaky gameplay, I'm a big fan of, even though I am absolute garbage at it. I'm looking forward to seeing somebody else playing this game. Honestly, more so than I am. So I'm just dying over and over again. Burn is giving a briefing using a projector. We're going to plant a stun mine and then link several of the overseers with Emily's domino power. So that whatever happens to one of them will happen to all of them. They share the same fate. Oh. Well, that's pretty cool. That's kind of cool. I like that. Projector will attract Vice Overseer Burns' attention, and when the mine affects one overseer, it will affect all of them. Easily done. Go check, brothers. Right away. No projector. Goes over. Flips the bomb. Kills everyone. There are many creative ways to use Domino. That's pretty cool. You shadow walk, another key power for Emily. Oh! <laughs> I had shadow a feeling they're just going to tear that dude right, right in half. You saw it in the uh, announced trailer that we made for the game, and you can. Oh, hey! The game. <laughs> like all the Main Street? Yeah, just like in uh, Deadpool. Right up Main Street. Once Overseer Burn out of the picture, the leader of the Howlers will owe Emily a favor, and that's just one way to complete the Dust District mission. Before closing today, we want to demonstrate another signature environment from a mission called A Crack in the Slab. It's another example of the missions in Dishonored 2 and how they're built around big, interesting themes. This mission takes place in a ruined manor that's been sealed for several years. At the start, the outsider appears and explains that reality was warped inside this place after an occult event. Your supernatural powers won't work inside the manor, and even time behaves strangely, allowing you to travel back and forth between the ruined present and the past when the manor was lavish and refined. So, uh, kind of like a specific environment that has a different power set just for timelines. Nice touch. Kind of reminds me of that um, Heroes Gemini thing. Ah, uh, so you can look as it was and as it is. Now we've moved backwards, years into the past, when the manor was still inhabited and guarded. The timepiece allows you to switch back and forth. Very cool. Looking through the lenses of the Outsider's timepiece, you can see the alternate timeline. This is useful for solving puzzles, as you've seen, but it can also be used to avoid or take down enemies. You can watch enemies in the alternate timeline and then step through to execute your plans. Nice touch. So since you're like a, just a time bandit jumping in, stabbing necks, and jumping back out again, look how I react to somebody just falling dead with a knife through the neck. I'm like, I don't know how it happened. Stab to the face of the next guy. Stab to the face of the next guy. They can't look at you. They can't see you. You're just a cool presence in the goddamn room. I believe there's a ghost. A spooky ghost. That stabs people in the neck. We hope you're going to love the game as much as we do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I am. I think. I, I think I could really enjoy that. Although but I do feel, because of my habit of playing through games, I'll probably never so play through as Corvo. I would always play through as his daughter. The game and the first well, game, they're, they're the really Empress's daughter. You guys, to, you guys to get your hands on it, and you don't have to wait long. Uh, all of you can leave your mark on the Empire of the Isles um, because Dishonored 2 will release on PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and PC, November 11th, 2016. Nice. But so that's one of the biggest things I always like about E3. It's actually important. the announcement of release this dates. This is the worldwide launch of the Dishonored 2 gameplay trailer. You're seeing it here first. Good night. Well done. Bethesda stuff works. Cool. A lot of scenes of footage that we've actually seen throughout this uh, conference, though, so... Massively surprised by what we're seeing.
It's a terrible world. Jeez, did he just like take two heads and a spine in one shot? So good. <laughs> Yank dead. Oh yeah, so he's in the domino, shoot one guy in the neck, or face. Oh! Whoa! Pulled into some sort of darkness. So with the timepiece, I'm imagining you're having to actually go back and there's going to be a fairly elemental story about your own mother and that kind of thing as well which would be interesting if you're going to be going back in time take back what's yours and it'll probably be your mom take back your mom cool very excited about dishonor 2 can i please have another round of applause for the very shy and took off harvey smith <laughs> he took off like I'm done. You know, like, I'm just gonna show them the footage and then I'm away. Those guys are fantastic. They've been working their butts off. Now, one of the things that Dishonored fans have been asking about a lot is whether or not we're going to do a collector's edition. So tonight, I'm happy to confirm that yes, we will be doing a limited number of Dishonored 2 collector's editions. The collector's edition comes with a very cool replica of Corvo's mask as well as uh, Emily's ring, and it'll be available through retailers around the globe, but supplies are limited, and as we saw with Fallout 4 last year... Well, guys, it's just because they're actually, like, saying you can pre-order these games. If you are a kind of person who pre-orders, I will put a link to the... on the side here, on the cards, that actually allows you to go and order it through Amazon. If you would use the pre-order link that I put on to the video, uh, a, a no extra charge to you guys. A little bit of cash would go to me. Um, so if you ever feel like it, feel free to use the affiliate links that I put on the videos to make purchases through Amazon. Anything that you purchase will help support the channel and help support these videos. So it doesn't cost you anything, and it's just a matter of clicking us on. And if you're going to buy it anyway, why not? It's kind of interesting because um, I've seen other shows do this, and they actually end up getting a, a small listing of the weird things you buy. I challenge you to embarrass me by what you buy using that link. <laughs> I'd be very impressed if you can even imagine. Would you please join me in thanking them all for their incredible? We should probably applaud Zenimax, Bethesda, Arcane Studios, all those guys. They do a really good. Bethesda actually do a really good work. They've. I mean, Bioware was the RPG guys for, what, near a decade? And then EA bought them so, up and we had a lot of issues with the content that came the out afterwards, but Bethesda have managed the Elder Scrolls license, Doom license, Fallout, and Dishonored, and now Quake, and Fallout Shelter, and Prey. Like, they have a lot of really big titles under their hold, and it's so cool. Uh, give you guys they, they, they do a good so job of them all. That's the so biggest for thing. For you here in Los Angeles, when you leave tonight, you'll get a special t-shirt. Um, Woo! Free t-shirts for the people in the crowd! Commemorating this event ah, and all of the games that we've shown. And for those of you watching cool. the stream at home, Adam and Morgan have t-shirts to give away, so keep watching for a chance to get yours. 
And Ugh. that is everything we have to show you from this stage. So I'm really not that entertained. Hangar, you can head over to the other side of the lot. If you're watching <sighs> so that's the end of their conference. So they're probably going to have a wee quick uh, video co compilation of this all. But what we got shown today uh, from Bethesda is actually a lot of new content. Uh, they opened with Quake. They showed us a lot of new Fallout stuff that I don't know if people really all seen beforehand. A new video for Prey. A lot of gameplay footage for Dishonored 2. Yeah, man, that was a right, big so show, much. really. Nah, eh, fuck you, Adam Sessler. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, man, the guy in the background. <laughs> Just checking out, cool. So he has so much uh, in that Bethesda conference that was actually pretty cool. Um, I love Elder Scrolls information, uh, the remaster, Doom Snap Map stuff, multiplayer DLC. Uh, new modes. There was Quake announced for Quake Champions for PC. There, oh, that was. I mean, I saw the E3 con EA conference earlier on, and I wasn't going. I wasn't expecting to be entertained or surprised or shocked in any way, shape, or form by what they were going to show us because that's EA. They they tend to actually just do sports and whatever other game that actually is big at the time, which is Battlefield One. Um. Bethesda have such a great series of games. I'm still horribly disappointed that Prey isn't the game we saw the video of years ago, months ago. Like that, that looked really interesting. I mean, it looked, and mechanics wise, it looked like not fleshed out, but it kind of went like that would be cool to do in that particular instance. And even if it was just a runner game of you chasing after those guys, that'd be fun unto itself. So I don't know. Um,. I think that's me so finished for the E3 stream for tonight. Um, of course, you remember, if you want to try and win uh, one of those t-shirts they were chatting about previously, you can go on to uh, BE3, or use the hashtag BE3 to be able... <laughs> are Manny cool? Yeah, I think you are at the moment. You're the only person there. Um, I think uh, Diode Nerd is watching as well, but he's silently watching, probably passing out, because it is about 4 a.m. here on uh, the GMT time. The... <sighs> If you want to actually use the hashtag B3, you'll be able to try and win one of their Bethesda t-shirts that are um, being handed out to the crowd at the show live. But I'm sure they're going to be continuing on this for another while. I'm talking about a number of uh, extra things that are actually like just more details about the games that they have presented in the conference. But all that information is not direct conference material. They've already finished their stage show, which to be honest was only about... Yeah... It really only was uh, a solid 40, 50 minutes because they started about 20 minutes late, even though the stream has been going for an hour. Um, Bethesda did a great show. I got think winners of E3 so far because the only other thing I've seen is EA. So, well, what else? <laughs> we've, got, we've got a shitload of streams over the next 48 hours. We have Square Enix, we have Sony, we have Microsoft, we have PC Gamers, we have Ubisoft. Man, I need to get some fucking sleep. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that these streams are up available for everybody to catch on YouTube. Uh, of course, you can always follow more here on twitch.tv forward slash pastiche of skin. You can always follow more on youtube.com forward slash pastiche of skin. You can catch me on Twitter on twitter.com pastiche of derm. And you can also get me on Facebook under Pastiche of Skin as well. Yes, guys. E3 has begun. The exhaustion starts. It is hard to keep rolling whenever it's actually got these odd times. I'm excited for uh, this Sony conference myself. I was not expecting Bethesda conference to actually get me as hyped as it was. Uh, if you missed out on it so far, you can catch it on the replay and go back again. I recommend doing that. To be honest, this thing that they're doing now with the after content, it's cool, it's interesting, but it's a lot of details and information that you're going to get through press releases and normal media in general tomorrow morning. So it's no rush. <laughs> Excuse me. It's no rush at all. So I'd recommend that you go and check out my own stream of this previously. And I'm going to say, guys, it has been an absolute pleasure. I'm Durham for Pastiche of Skin. I will see you guys all in the next episode. Bye-bye. Oh, God. <laughs>
talked about tonight. So stay tuned to, to E3 coverage, and we'll be talking about a lot of other things that you may be interested in besides what we talked about tonight. But seriously, I thank the community. You guys are great. You're, what we, you're why we do what we do. Matt, you're always a good guy. Absolute pleasure to Thanks, talk Adam. to you, and My congratulations pleasure. again.